Hi guys, I'm Jake from Iris Sailing here with another Sail Smart video to keep you guys super clued up and ready to go for when we go sailing later on this year. Now, I'd like to talk to you about tide. Now, tide is a bit of a mysterious, weird and wonderful thing that interacts with us when we go sailing on the sea. If you're sailing inland, it might not be something you have to worry about right now, but one day you might go sailing on the sea, and then it's gonna be pretty important. So, if we get the tide wrong, we might end up sailing on the seabed, which won't work very well. We'll get stuck pretty quick. If we get it right, well, then we're probably gonna get some places pretty quick and also maximize our sailing time, which would be absolutely fantastic. To understand the most about tide, we probably need to go to university and get a degree because it can be quite complicated. But I think for us, maybe we can learn a few of the basics at home right now. Tide is water that is moving. That's what tide is, it's water that is moving. So if we imagine that this ball is the earth and over here is the sun, as well as us orbiting the sun, the sun is also pulling the water to this side of the earth. So right here, they would get a bit extra water. As we rotate, that changes. And now it's this part of the earth that gets a bit more water. And the part that had it earlier doesn't. So that creates the water moving. Now, something that has more of an impact on tide is actually the moon. So if we have the earth, and the moon, and we know that the moon orbits around us. The moon is much, much closer than the sun, and it's got that little bit of gravity, and it's pulling the water just like the sun did. So as the moon is here, the water on this side is being pulled towards the moon. As the moon moves round, now it's pulling to this side. If I put it here, it's gonna to pull towards you. So the moon twisting around us, and don't forget, we twist as well. That's what's making the water move. And let's not get too complicated, but just remember that. The moon is the thing that most affects the tide. As it orbits around us, and as the Earth spins on its axis, that creates tide at different points at different times. What else do we need to know about tide? Well, very simply, tide goes in and tide goes out. And if you can grasp that, you're most of the way there to understanding what we need to know about tide. When it goes in, we've got a name for that and we call it flood, a flood tide. When the water goes out, we call that ebb, and that would be an ebbing tide. So we've got flood and ebb. When it floods, so it comes in all the way and it rises, when it gets to the top, the water is high and we call that high water. When it ebbs and it goes out and the water will go down and down and down, when it gets to the bottom, we call that low water because the water is low. High water, low water. And it sounds simple, but it's actually technically correct to say those words. The tide will come in and out, flood and ebb, for most of the UK twice a day. So it'll come all the way in, all the way out, all the way in, and all the way out in roughly, not exactly, roughly 24 hours. And if you're really smart, you'll work out that on average, it will take six hours to come in and then six hours to go out. Where you are might depend on how high or low it comes in. Some places it will come in five metres high and five metres out. Some will be seven, some might be two. It varies across the UK. It varies even more across the world. And if you want to find some exciting tides, you might find some that only come in or out once a day. But for us in the UK, we get two high waters and two low waters roughly in 24 hours. Now, with the Earth spinning, the Moon orbiting, and the Earth and the Moon orbiting the Sun, 
we get different types of tide. If the moon and the sun are all in a line, then you're going to get something called a spring tide. Now, a spring tide, when the water comes in, it will probably come in extra high. So it will be higher than normal. Now I've got here, really simple, a whiteboard, just to explain the basics. This here is the earth, this is the water, and this water represents the lowest that it could possibly ever go. Now, I'm going to draw for you a spring high water. So remember spring, lots of water. And a spring high water will come in really high. Now, the other thing about spring is when the water goes out, it will go out quite far. So you'll get quite a low, low water. And that would be a spring tide. There's another type of tide that we might need to know about, and that's called a neap tide. Now, a neap tide is sort of the opposite to a spring. So instead of getting a really high, high water, it's not that high. And instead of getting a really, really low, low water, it's not that low. So a high water for a neap tide would look a bit like this. And a neap low water might look a bit like this. Now, the other thing for us to know is something called tidal range. Now, that's actually quite important. Tidal range is the difference between high water and low water. So for a neap, the difference between high water and low water isn't that much. For a spring, obviously it's quite different. A spring high water and a spring low water. What that means for us is it's the same amount of time that our water is moving in. It's still that 24 hours, it's still six hours for it to come from low water to high water or high water to low water on average. It's the same amount of time, but more water for a spring tide. And what that will mean is it's gonna move quicker. So if you want to get somewhere and you're going against a spring tide, you might struggle. Likewise, if you wanna get somewhere, and you want to get there quickly, and you can go with a spring tide, you're gonna get there quite quickly, which is fantastic. A neap tide, well, that's got a smaller tidal range. And that will mean that there's less water moving around, and so it won't move quite as fast. And that's tidal range. Right then, team, with spring and neap tides, Remembering it's the moon that has the most effect on the tide, we can actually know roughly what's going on just by looking out the window. So if we remember that the sun's over here, this is the earth, and this is the moon. Now if the moon is sideways onto the sun, either here or on this side, it's going to be a half moon, and that's going to give us a neap tide. If the moon's roughly around here or here, and we've got a new moon or a full moon, that's going to be a spring tide. And sometimes the way people remember that is all of these three things are in line. The sun, the moon and the earth, all the moons over here. But either way, that's in line. That's going to give us a spring tide. If we've got a half moon, they're not quite in line because we've got a line going this way and the sun and the earth going this way. And that's going to give us a neap tide. Half moon, neap. Full moon or new moon, spring tide. 
So have a look out the window tonight and see if you can see what sort of tide we're on at the moment. So what we're going to do for you today is we are going to put in the description a little quiz for you to do to see how much you've been paying attention. We're also going to put in a tide table. Now, a tide table might look like this. And a small section, the bit we want to know, will be this information. Now, the bits that we need to know, we've got the date, because we need to know what day we're going to go sailing on. And then we're largely going to get these four sets of numbers. And you guessed it. Those numbers are a high water, a low water, a high water, and a low water. And you get the time, and you're going to get the height. Now, what I'd like you to do is see if you can draw out, for me, a little picture like I've done here, and draw on the high waters and the low waters, draw on the heights in metres, is what it comes out as, and see if you can work out in metres what the difference is. So take the high water minus the low water, and that will give you the difference, and that will be your tidal range. Now, when you're getting your tide table, your tide details, it is essential that you know where you're going sailing. There is no point going sailing in Cardiff and getting a tide table for Portsmouth because it will be very different. So, one of the first steps would be to work out where you're going sailing and finding a local tide table for you. Now, if you've got a port or a harbour authority, they will probably have one for you. Or maybe it's your club or your centre where you're going sailing. They'll be able to give you one that will be specific for your area of sailing. So that is the basics to tide. Tide can be one of the most fantastic things for us to make the most of whilst we're sailing. So it's worth doing your homework, knowing the basics and having a great time on the water. Tide is different wherever you go, so don't forget to ask your instructor or someone local to where you're going sailing if there's anything else that you need to know. Have a great time and we'll see you next week. Cheers guys.